Hi guys, in this session, we'll be talking about Lentor Modern, uh, which is obviously the in thing, uh, because uh, it's coming up this weekend regarding its launch. So uh, let's not waste any more time. This will be the uh, my perspective, my review on it, uh, before you guys go ahead for the ballot. Okay, so uh, this is the concept. Uh, obviously, it looks nice. Uh, it's going to be by, I think, Guaco. Uh, which is quite known for is their build quality, lah. Okay, but anyway, that's not the focus today. Uh, disclaimer: Whatever I share today, just based on my own point of view and my own research, so make sure you do your due diligence. If not, go and seek uh, the right professional for uh help before you make any move. So, uh, yep, this is the not modern. You have uh the integrated part, which you have the MRT, uh, you've got your shopping mall, uh, everything down on downstairs, lah. A I don't foresee it to be as, as nice as North Park because North Park literally has everything. Uh, but of course, it's still quite decent because you've got a supermarket and everything all downstairs. And the uh, number of units is quite okay, 600 plus units. Land size also uh, is quite okay. And then the thing is, is that um, there are a lot of uh, agents out there who, who claim that uh, Linton model is, you know, is the first mobile advantage. A which I beg to differ because actually if you look if you look at this map you realize that there are already quite a lot of existing movers there so this is far from the first mover you are the first in maybe this decade and definitely more to come and they like to say you know the the more the land comes in the more land comes in uh the higher the price will be. It really depends. It really depends on when exactly is your land going to come in. If your land is going to come in tomorrow, how much more can the price be, right? But if your land is going to come in maybe like 10 years time, where where the property prices are going to be probably another uh, sky high level, then it's very likely going to help push up your price. But if the government is pushing everything together, then there is something wrong. Then that would definitely uh, increase the immediate supply, which will erode um the 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 price power of those uh as you given uh, the similar amount of demand la. and then if we look at the current competition right now you've got Thompson Group which is right beside the Lentor MRT <laughs> then you've got Cal Rose you've got Far Horizon Season Park Castle Green Novo which is uh, OEC then you've got your Brilliant you also got Meadows uh Pierce uh. Amo is a little bit just further down. Then before that, you also got Panorama. Okay. And these are quite some of them are quite decent competitors. Uh. That means they will always stay in the hearts of your future buyer if they ever or ever want to consider land talk. And that's why it is uh tricky to to um I wouldn't say Lentor model is a first mover. It is a first mover in two days, in, let's say maybe in this decade, like what I mentioned, but it's definitely not the first mover in Lentor. I think that is something to be clear about. Okay, so basic information, you've got your land size, which is quite okay, and then you've got your unit number, then you've got your commercial, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when is it going to be done? Probably 201, 2026. Okay, and then... Uh, unit mix is around like this, so majority uh, will be more towards the three and the two bedrooms. Then we look at the surrounding competitions. How many uh, units are there in the within the one cam loop? And then we've got uh, a few of them. We've got the all these like what I mentioned just now, and we all add them together. There's not too many of them in terms of separate condos. But the even then the units because they are generally quite big condos, so that's why the units you add it up together is already existing. You have three thousand units, which is fair enough, which is okay. But later we'll touch on the main point later. And this is uh, as of now, if if there are no upcoming launches, there are no upcoming lands that are going to be built um into condos soon. Then I think land model will be quite safe. Uh, but also depends on the price that they launch I and. Mean, that's why when it comes to property, it's not as simple as oh you know the yeah, MRT is like this, uh the the land price are uh, all good and like this. It really depends on a lot of factors that you gotta weigh, you gotta combine them together. Is it all going to be generally a good investment? And and if you're talking about something that's be causing uh millions of dollars and you're gonna be making at least maybe a few hundred thousand dollar profit, then it's not gonna be so easy, right? If not, then everyone will be flipping properties and not actually working their salary job and because not everyone can do it and not everyone to be honest 
to be very, very brutally honest, majority do not have the bandwidth to be logical investors. They always treat property like, hey, I want to buy, I want to be a logical investor. But when they come to property, it's like looking at cars, they become emotional. It is, it is like shopping for whatever they like. And which is which becomes a problem because the future buyer may not be looking at what these people are, are they like right now. Okay. So these are some of the competitors that I put up. Uh, and they are all very solid competitors and they will still have demand. In fact, this guy is very, very old already and recently had a transaction uh that has been um I would say sky high like, given the age now. And then I purposely put in Ammo even though it's not really like uh, an immediate kind of competitor. Why? Because I, I use it as a price gauge. Let's see. Uh, You've got these four. And they are freehold. Then you've got this one. If there's a 99 year. And if we pull Ammo, Ammo was transacted around this range, which is 2001 plus. And if, if Lender Modern is going to be launched 2002 to 2003 uh, on average, then it's likely going to be trading around this level. Okay, and given this level, how big the price gap will be? Now the existing clear closest guy is Thompson Grove over here, which is thousand five, and then the rest are like thousand four plus thousand five. So let's say maybe an average of thousand four PSF. Then you've got Lenthor Modern, which is a nine nine year versus a three hole, which versus a whole bunch of free hole. The price gap is going to be maybe let's say two thousand two, uh, two two five zero, and then we are looking at, uh. Maybe eight hundred fifty PSF difference. I think that's gonna be a, a very, very very big price gap to be concerned about. Uh. Um, yes, it is new. Uh, but the problem is these guys are not just old. They are old every old. So they are something that you need to be worried about if you are just buying into this area and thinking that you know all new company money is definitely not uh, so if we look at master plan, you've got uh the few already pointed out just now. So all these I'm not gonna go through again. Then you've got the upcoming pieces of land. Yes, you realize there are a lot of pieces of land over here. You know, people are attending, seeing everywhere is like oh, land is gonna be the next big thing, which I don't disagree. But the problem comes when we have a whole bunch of lands being all launched together almost back to back, back to back. You've got this one launched already, then you've got this one only just wrap up the start of the year. Uh, then you've got these two, which literally just ended today, uh, 13th of September. You just end your bidding process, and then later we'll look at the prices. And then you've got these two that are going to be launched in October. So you suddenly you've got one shot, uh, you've got within a span of less than two years, you've got one piece, uh, two piece, three, four, five, six pieces of big plots of land. That means there's going to be injection of a lot of supply. And that is not something to be uh ignored because this is unless you're telling me you've got three thousand three thousand plus units together in one development then maybe there's gonna be a mega big development uh and probably the largest in the whole entire Singapore if you've got three thousand which is quite scary by the way and and then I'm not too worried because you got um yes you may have internal competition but you push each other's prices up but the problem is you've got these six pieces all competing against each other because people may like a certain condo, they may like this condo, but they may not like this condo, or they may like this condo, but they may not like this condo. So you've got quite a lot of competition in this area. That that is something to think about. And then you've got uh one km radius. You've got Anderson Primary. Um, some people they are looking at you know, obviously these, some like this. I'm not gonna be talking about schools. I'm so sick talking about schools and how people call proclaim it to be the you know the, the deciding factor whether whether it's gonna be the, the money making factor, which is obviously not uh, but which I already went through quite a lot of times already. Uh, but based on uh what we have, um it seems that mental model is not with the one cam radius of Zenix. So those people buying for Zenix, I think that but uh, you may not want to uh you may want to stay away la, from from Lentor, la. because if you look at it maybe some other pots next time will have but only if you are really 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 want to bet your chances i remember you buy a property there doesn't mean that you confirm but sure will go in la. it just increases your chance so that is something that you need to think about it also uh in degree in prices you've got uh, this whole range blah 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 it's your kind of troubleshot We've got a price matrix over here, so we've got 
um, one bedroom which starts at around this price and then your two bedroom around this price three bedrooms around this price so average i think you easily should be about thousand two plus okay because they are probably going to try to out, outdo uh armor residences uh, given that they are, you know, they are trying to do the branding thing of like a uh, uh, integrated development, blah blah blah. Okay, I, I certainly don't doubt the quality of of Guapo. It's just that uh, uh, I think uh, I've done quite some research to show that it doesn't mean that and uh, whether a whether a development is profitable or not, it really doesn't boil down to who the developer is. It really boils down to much more than that. Okay, <clears throat> so. Um, why am I showing you this chart? Because, like what I mentioned just now, we've got a 99 year, 99 this whole gap, so with the, with the old freehold, there's 800 plus beers. Have you, you see, uh, at the near, near towards the Hillview site, you've got uh, Helia versus Glendale Park. You've got uh, the, when Helia was launched, there was a 400 PSF gap, and today look at who is closing the gap. Okay, whereas this guy hasn't actually moved up, I mean, it, it did move up. But the problem is they move up a lot for you to be making money. And I think a lot of us know that he did exactly make a lot of money. Okay. I certainly don't think it's a developer's problem. Uh, next, if you've got um near towards the committee side, you've got a uh, trilic, which also didn't really make exactly a lot of money in this sense for those people who you know rush in. So many people say that you know first day launch is gonna be the best price. Uh, unfortunately, you can see this guy, those those that bought first day probably went back home and paid for quite a few days. Or maybe they even had a coma. La. They probably, the, the longer the coma, the, the, the better they feel. <laughs> maybe they wake up after 10 years and then they realize, oh, okay, it's time for me to finally exit. They waited 10 years to exit. So for those of you who have very, very high patience, you're going to be waiting 10, 10 years just to go back to the same price that you enter before buy some duty and before all the other choices, then by all means. Okay, please go ahead. Then you've got uh, 100 trees, which is not a freehold, it's a 9, 5, 6. Don't ask me how you got all these funny, funny num uh, um, leasehold numbers. I seriously have no idea, which I don't think is also important. But they are uh, usually their characteristics are pretty, are pretty much quite similar to a freehold kind of characteristics. And then you've got uh, 100 trees uh, during this launch. To here, blue color, uh, trying to only move this amount, whereas hundred trees move this amount. Which one is the one that there is the clear winner over here? I think it's very obvious. Okay, then back to this map. Uh, I've put it. I put in the PPR, the the price of the land, and then you've got a uh, little more than previously. They got nine bits. Then you've got uh this one. You've got Lentil Hill Residences, which is the parcel A that was done earlier this year. They had four bits, which is not as optimistic as Lentil Modern. Okay, or rather not as competitive. And then you've got these two pieces which just concluded. And this one was 1108 PPR. This one is about 1130 PPR. And if we compare for comparison's sake, we've got uh Amo that had 15 leaders, uh, 15, uh, that was how hot it was. Uh. Uh, that means 15 developers they were they were fighting on this land because they felt the upside was so good. And true enough, we've got uh, are more that overperformed 98% so uh, in the first weekend then that one the PPR was more more one eight that means it is very similar to this and this the break even was one eight two two that means you're gonna add maybe about twelve that means one one four two PSF break even for uh no I mean uh one and uh, as in uh one eight one eight one eight one one eight four uh how much Oh my god, my 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 sister is joining me. Okay, so maybe one eight one eight three four lah. One eight three four. Okay, my bed is getting big. My 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 brain shutting out already. Then you've also got this one also. Um, which is very similar to Amos one. Which is maybe about one eight one two PSF kind of break even. If both of them are hovering around the uh, the the low thousand eight hundreds, that means they do not need to be launching at the same price as Lentil Modern. And if that is the case, uh, will it limit how much the developers at Lentil Modern can move their prices? Then, okay. And then I think there's a certain reason why 
there are so many businesses of land that are being launched at the same time. I think it's a it's a method by the government to control the prices of the land of this area because we know the market sentiment now it can be quite bullish, it can be quite crazy, and government is well aware of this, and hence they are uh trying to stop uh the, the prices and lender from going haywire because they, they they probably do not want the developers to suddenly push up the price that much and hence they just one shot they throw in uh one piece two piece three four five six pieces of land then this will definitely help to stabilize the prices especially uh you've got these two pieces that are trans that are just transacted today at uh rather decent prices uh, I would say uh compared to um, I'm not saying that it's decent decent but if you compare to the recent few launches, I think it's pretty decent. All right. And, uh, like what I mentioned, I think uh, Lento Modern, the um, developer is a uh, land, and then they also uh, bid up for Parcel A, which was this piece. Uh, in a way, they I feel it's more to protect their price because you've got uh, two developments under control, so they will be they they probably will want to price it price uh dominate the area and then allow them to have a little bit more pricing advantage. Huh? So this one was the one that concluded today. Uh the big event is around one eight four zero for the first for the first port, which is uh puzzle B, the slightly smaller port. And then we also got uh one eight one zero for the Lentor central plot. Right? These are break even. That means both of them as long as they sell thousand eight hundred plus, they are they are pretty even. And I, but I don't think I seriously don't think developers want to sell thousand eight hundred plus because it means that they are doing all this for free. And I don't I don't I we all know that they are not a charitable organization. Okay, and you uh you've got uh Lentor Modern uh let no Lentor Modern Lentor Passer A transacted at this price, but you almost at this price it was lower. And hence, it is expected that uh the the new two new pieces that was awarded that was tendered close today, uh definitely going to be a higher higher break even price. I mean, this was uh some Hartman's research. Uh, they also agreed that Lentor area will see an injection supply. Of, I don't think it's just this number. Later, I'll show you it's going to be higher. Okay. Um. Then you also got uh. This point, I think, which is quite quite legit, developers may not want to buy land in an area where there's ample supply. There's, so there's going to be a, a huge influx of supply in this area, and that will make it very hard for developers to increase their profit margin. Because by increasing your price, it's going to make it harder for them to sell, and that is going to cause quite a little bit of headache next time for them. Okay, this one was the one that, that, was, that I was referring to. You've got Lentor Modern have 605 units. You've got uh, Lentor Hill Residences 595 units. And if I add these few pieces, all these are already uh, stated, uh, estimated by URA already. And if I add these four pieces together, one, two, three, four, and then plus this Lentor Modern and also and the Parliament Parcel A, all these together, that will give us a total of almost 3,000 units in just less than two years span. And I and that is uh quite a shock. Uh, I would say a uh, quite a shock. Uh. I think I haven't managed to find other places that has such a tight supply ever since the 213 pulling measures. And that is something for you for for that that I will be really, really, really worried about because if you're telling me three thousand units or like I mentioned is a single developer, I'm not too concerned, but you've got three thousand units spread across six different developments and they are all fighting together. There is uh there is not somewhere where I want to put my money in investment. Lah. Okay. And then you've got 3,000 plus already existing in the form of the resales right now. And that will mean that soon, very soon we will have 6,000 units in the area easily before the next few land, land plots come in. Okay. And uh, so we look at certain areas that were similar to this. That means within a span of two years or three years, they, they suddenly, government suddenly threw in a lot of uh, land out for sale and then developers started building them all together. And you've got uh, standards and rates, uh, venue residences and new residences all in Potombasi, that area. Uh, they were completed quite close together. La. And then we look at their performance. We've got new residences, uh, going downhill, you've got uh, sand reeds also going downhill or sideways, and also you've got sand residences only recently then they managed to recover. Before that, before 2012 started, 
uh, they were basically still underwater and that is something that, that I feel is uh, not very optimistic. Of course, you've got uh, venue residences that managed to make money and out of all these venue residences was the newest one. So it definitely doesn't come with a surprise that uh, it, it actually ended up making money. And venue residences, uh, let me clarify, if you look at the map on the street directory, you realize that it is the condo that most people will say, I cannot make it, lah, wah, then jala, lah, because it is the one that is facing the expressway. And that is a, a lot of uh, where uh, uh, people you know people come with all kinds of rejection. Oh, this is a bad property, are facing this, uh, what's so noisy. Uh. But in the end, you realize that out of the four of them, this one, the, this, one, this one seems to be the most profitable. And hence, does it mean that whatever you think beforehand, your, your own beliefs are actually limiting you when it comes to the property market assessment. Okay, and then also we are looking at uh, Pongo. Uh, Water Town was the first one. This was the so-called first mover in then in the in the area. Uh, like what I mentioned before, I appear in the <laughs> the, the the commercial and probably uh, like what my boss says. Uh, probably that's why they underperform lah. Okay, too bad for for them. Too bad for me. Then then you've got a uh, Trader Joe Park Centrals all launched within the span of less than two years. Uh, in fact, I think just one year. Some zero three one two zero three one one, and let's take a look. Water Town, for those people who bought here, they actually made money. For those people who ended up after two quarters, they bought here. Uh, to, today, they more or less break even only when it comes to selling price. They are not even talking about net net. Uh. That means they've been underwater for the longest time. And these people, okay, uh, you may think, oh, you know, first day launch, that kind of thing. But later, I'll show you why this price is actually very, very, very scary for developers. Okay, And then, even then, you look at the the integrated one because they promised the integrated one, but you look at the gap. Last time there was a really almost about two, three hundred years of gap. And that still didn't justify the full price tag of the you know the, the integrated development kind of concept. So for Water Town, uh the break even was actually one two five eight. That means the first year, uh, the first quarter, uh, developers was actually selling below break even. That means actually their break even was here, but they sold below break even. That means if today you're telling me lentil model and break even is 1933 PSF, that means today lentil model is going to be selling at 1850 PSF. Or uh, maybe even 1800, then I'll say by all means go ahead, go and buy. But we all know that in this sellers market, it's going to be very, 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 very difficult, almost impossible for them to be launching this price. It doesn't make sense for them to be launching this price given the market, the bullish market sentiment right now. Okay. So, uh, even at this price, you realize there were people who bought in at just actually a little bit less than 10% profit margin for the developer and they still lost money. Right? Whereas there were the, the whole chunk of people who actually made quite a lot of money in Water Town were those people who bought mostly below, way, way, way below break even prices. So, like what I mentioned, if Guaco is going to be telling you, hey, uh, these are very even price. You're going to be selling ten to twenty percent below that, uh, uh, because we feel like giving everyone a discount because we are feeling nice. Then okay, go ahead buy. But we all know it's not possible. It's not going to be like this on Saturday. Okay, so the the, the procedure of letter water uh launch price will be uh um like this. Then you already cut off already. Now probably uh done doing up the merging of track. Then you've got e balloting which is gonna be coming uh basically now uh not not now today Wednesday and also priority booking on Friday and Saturday all the others they they have already done the booking and good luck to them. So conclusion for Lando Mona I feel uh because of the surrounding competition that is my main concern over there. So and also how much will the profit margin be? So in the first place I feel. The, the thing about Nippon model is that you've got competition that are really quite solid existing already. Then the other main thing that I'm really even more concerned is the super influx of supply. I Like I mentioned, I haven't seen any other parts of Singapore after 2013 having that influx of supply that fast. So this is going definitely going uh, an obvious measure, I feel, by the government to curb the prices from running haywire in the Nepal area. Because we all are expecting, uh, you know, this, uh, 
uh, this integrated thing. So that's why people are, feel that it's justifiable to pay the kind of money, which I still really don't think so. And based on this, I think uh, if you want to buy a leather model, I think it's still very nice. It's still a very nice con uh, um, condominium to be staying in, even if it's integrated and all. Um, but if you are not buying to the foreign state, you are buying more for investment purposes, you can be staying inside by uh, more of like uh, investing. Then if your main aim is to invest and make money, then I I really don't think that it is somewhere that, that, that I will put my money in right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I think that's pretty much all we have for, for Lentil Modern. And then one, uh, something to clarify, I think I've got one uh, buyer who, uh, one viewer actually who, who texted me, you know, asking me, oh, uh, how much to engage you for uh, resale buying? I mean, resale buying, let me just clarify first. If you want to engage me for, to help you find a good deal for resale, uh, when I say good deal, I mean, I must also feel that it's a good deal. Like, not that I feel like I bring you the help. You know, if, if you, unless you are a super emotional buyer, then I, think, I think you just go ahead and go and shop for yourself. You'll be easier. Why for resale buyers, if I represent, it has to be exclusive. Let me just clarify, it has to be exclusive. And then I'll be collecting commission from the buyer unless the seller agent offers to do to, to that, uh, to, to, to share the commission. Because the problem is that we've got a lot of rogue agents, you know, nowadays they refuse to co broke and that, that makes the whole situation very, very tricky. And then it, it kind of like, a, there, there's also I find there's a conflict of interest if it's, if, it's, uh, uh, if I have to, you know, collect from the seller side, and then you've got this and that, all, and all this nonsense. So I think I'll just cut it short. If you are not willing to to, to pay the 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 uh one percent, um one percent service fee for for resale condos, then I think uh you probably will be better off finding somebody else lah. Because I really don't think that uh I feel that my expertise and my uh, my generally what I, what I uh am able to do for my clients is that. Usually they feel that oh they feel the pinch by paying a one percent. But usually when I do uh serve them, I'm usually able to cut the price by easily more than that. And that actually helps to provide them with more than enough value from them than them not paying the service fee themselves. Because uh sometimes, you know, when it comes to negotiation, things like that actually work. So I'm I'm not gonna be sharing about this. This is a bit of a trick secret. So I think it's just something for me to clarify. And also uh I'm I'm also glad and, and thankful that uh there's this one recently there's this girl who came up to me telling me that hey we've got this other AJ already uh but uh but we are thinking of going ahead with you if is if you are if you feel your your advice is cool blah blah blah. Yeah I think it's very yeah, I think it's a good thing that, that you guys are transparent. I think uh and it's very important because uh, uh it, it, it makes me feel that I can I can trust you because there are a lot of people who like pay advantage right? like what I said before and it's actually not fair to to professionals like me and if you feel uh but at the end of the day like what I mentioned a lot uh from what I've found out a lot of these people who are you know the, the so called chips kids they'll end up <laughs> buying the wrong thing. So too bad for them. Uh, if they want to go ahead and 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 uh and go for the you know the the the, the cheaper road the the cheaper route then uh I think sometimes uh you get what you're worth lah. You get what you pay for lah. Okay, and that is what we have for today. Uh, yep. Any other things that you want to uh, find out more about rental model or any other uh investment uh, opportunities that you feel you still feel that in this market um, is very hard to find and you need help then just text me and please remember we okay let me just reiterate it again this market is on a high this market is on a high 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 so yeah, I like to see it as 2013 market yes a lot of the projects are not making money were were not making money back in two one three. Were there projects that actually make money in two one three? Yes, they are, but there are very 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 few of them. So please do a due diligence and see as you know that your market is is on a high. So stop buying and shopping around like as if the market is on a low, and that is the problem. People like to complain and complain, but when they look at houses, they look at show flat, they become emotional and think that market is on a low. And that is that is where things always go wrong. So make sure 
if you want to be a logical investor, you have to be very, very logical. You have to know what you want, where is the threshold, and then we will know very, 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 very well not to step out of the threshold. Okay? That, okay, so that will be all we have. And see you guys. Bye-bye.